Department at the Council of the Corporation of the City of Saga for Wednesday, and May the 9th, for a special council meeting. And then immediately following that will be the regular council meeting. I would ask that you rise and join with me in the Lord's Prayer, if you wish to do so. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Welcome to our meeting this morning. And we have to deal with the official plan review. Are there any uh, disclosures of direct or indirect pecuniary interest? And then uh, corporate report. John, ready to go? Yes, good morning, Madam Mayor and uh, members of council. Um, this the Mississauga Plan Review is a, a major project. Uh, Madam Mayor, I, I guess I, I don't know whether my colleagues agree with this or not, but I, I don't think we should be dealing with this uh, today. I believe that we should defer this. Um, when we had the resolutions that were prepared for members of council, there was discussion at that time indicating that um, we wanted to have a response on each of those representations. Uh, Most of us just received this last night. Excuse me, Madam Mayor. Mayor, this isn't uh, uh, related to Amendment 25. This is a review of the Mississauga plan, the official plan. It's a different item. Oh, with that, I'm sorry. Thank you. The more speakers, I don't know. meeting, Madam Mayor, um, and members of council, um, the, uh, the Planning Act requires that uh, we hold a meeting that's open to the public uh, and to determine if there's a need to review the official plan. And we're at that stage right now, um, where we, we are coming forward to, to council. Uh, we feel that there's certain justification for the for the need to review the Mississauga plan. This, um, this act, uh, the, the planning act that we, the previous planning act that uh, we brought this forward to you in December required that, that we appear before committee, or before council, um, and express and get approval to proceed. The new planning act, which came in effect in January of this year, Require, doesn't require that state of step any longer. It, it requires that all municipalities shall amend their official plan within every five years. So what we're asking for today, in the recommendation of council, is to endorse the work plan that's in front of you in the report, the, the addendum report, uh, as the basis for the review of Mississauga plan. By way of background, Madam <coughs> Mayor, um, Mississauga plan, the current official plan for for Mississauga was approved by the region in May of 2003. All of it is in place except one appeal, which is not one outstanding appeal, and it is uh, with respect to a development application. What's happened since 2003 is that the province has come forward in March of 2005 with a new provincial policy statement. In June of 2006, almost a year, a year ago, the growth plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe has come and as part of that, the province has said all municipalities' official plans must be brought into conformity with the growth plan within three years. So uh, almost a year has, uh, has passed, and by June 2009, we have to have our official plan uh, conformity with the growth plan. And third, uh, the third major provincial initiative is the Places to Grow Act, that, as I said, that requires that. Following that, in January of this year, Bill 51, which was the amendment to the Planning Act, uh, was, uh, brought, came into effect on January 1. So what we're asking for today is a public meeting that, uh, under the Planning Act, to look at the need to review the Mississauga plan. And the timing is, is, is excellent, in my opinion, because uh, we have, uh, for, hopefully today, for discussion, 
uh, amendments to the, the new zoning bylaw and Amendment 25, which was all the amendments to the Sasana plan. So as a starting point, we're in great shape and great timing that we would have an up-to-date Mississauga plan and zoning bylaw if Amendment 25 and the, the new zoning bylaw is adopted as a starting point for the review of Mississauga, uh, review of Mississauga plan. The main reasons for the review, Madam Mayor, are, are really there, there's four. We have to bring our official plan in conformity with all provincial planning initiatives. As I said, the, the provincial policy statement, the growth plan, and Bill 51. Also, it's time that our FIFA plan uh, is rewritten uh, with the, the, the intent towards the transition of development. Uh, the previous plan was really more aimed at Greenfields development, and we are, as you know, in a transition period with intensification, redevelopment, and infill. There's a series of emerging issues that we also have to bring the plan up to date. And finally, with all the other other major corporate issues that are going on, corporate initiatives, that our plan has to be work in conjunction uh, with these, including the strategic plan, the sustainability plan that we have to do by 2010, and other studies like the water park, uh, waterfront park strategy. Madam Mayor, this is not a comprehensive review of the whole plan. It's a scope review that we will be addressing these major issues to, to bring our plan into uh, primarily to conformity with the, uh, with the provincial initiatives. There are four main work uh, elements within the work program. Uh, there are, and I'll, I'll just, the next slide, I'll get into a little more detail. There are corporate studies and corporate initiatives that are ongoing. There are certain planning studies that we have to do as part of this uh, uh, reviewing of the plan and bringing it into conformity. We have the, uh, uh, the third component is department policy reviews and also Finally, our review of district plans or local area policy reviews. This is the schedule that I've just referred to, and it's, uh, it is contained in the report. The four major components of the review, the starting on the left, the corporate studies, those are the major uh, corporate initiatives, the building the city for the 21st century, the strategic plan review, sustainability plan, the plan, master plan for the arts, other work that uh, community services is doing, the cycling strategy, and several studies that transportation works are undertaking. Those are corporate initiatives that our, the, the review of Mississauga plan has to be part of and has to be in step with to make sure that we're all working, working together and, and aiming the same direction and the same vision. The next column, the planning studies, these are our major planning reports that are described in, in your report. Uh, that we will be bringing forward to uh, planning committee and council as requested when we, were, when we first came forward and said we wanted to undertake a review of uh, Mississauga plan, that we will be bringing these individually to planning committee. We won't wait until we have a new draft plan. We will bring each one of those, whether it's the community use studies, the employment land study, the office strategy, the growth management strategy, Chairman, we will be bringing those forward one at a time for uh, not approval because it's more of an endorsement uh, by committee so that they're at the end of the day when we have all the work done, it's not a surprise. And, and as part of each of these, there will be some form of consultation so that at the end, the final statutory public meeting, again, most of these issues won't be new. The third column, the Department Policies Review, these are mainly discussion papers that we will be doing internally. For the most part, these are a review of existing policies that uh, probably will not come to Planning and Development Committee, but will be part of the ongoing work, the internal work. And finally, we are still ongoing with local area policy reviews or, or district plan reviews. These will go on and will be incorporated into the new plan as we do them. We're currently undertaking South Down, Port Credit, Lakeview, uh, as well as we're undertaking a study of nodes and corridors. As you can see, we will bring all of this together into a draft, new official plan, have a statutory public meeting, and adopt a new plan, hopefully by June of 2009, which is the requirement of the province, as put on all municipalities. That's just a detail of the, all of our projects that are in the plan, and. Uh, You've got copies of it in your, in your report. 
Just by way of coordination and public consultation, I want the council to be aware that all departments have been involved in getting to this stage. This is not something that the planning and building department alone can undertake. We have been working uh, with all departments. They're aware of the time frames. They're aware of the, <coughs> the resources that, are, that will be required. They're aware of the issues. And we have been very successful in working together so that our, all of our work programs, uh, first of all, we're aware of each other's uh, work programs and, and needs. And secondly, we work together in coordination so that we can reach the timing that we, uh, we propose. Um, the citizen engagement exercise that you've heard about that will be coming through Bruce Carr's work with the uh, Building the City for the 21st Century, there will only be one major citizen engagement exercise. We are not going to the public on that scale for each one of these. That work that will be done later on this year will provide input for certainly Building the City for the 21st Century, the Strategic Plan, the Sustainability Plan, and certainly the Mississauga Plan. So we're, we're going to the public asking for visions and direction, but it'll only happen once and it'll be the basis for all four studies, including the Sasana Plan Review. Um, we have, as I said, we will be bringing the components of the, uh, each study, uh, the major studies, to Planning and Development Committee or General Committee uh, on a one-off basis. The public meeting will be held, as I said, when we have a new draft plan, uh, probably early in 2009. And we have been working with the communications department, um, and they will be having a communication strategy uh, as part of the consultation process. So in conclusion, Madam Mayor, uh, I think there, we think as a department, and certainly uh, uh, I think there is need at this point for the review of the Mississauga plan. The primary reasons, as I said, just in summary, that we have to be in conformity with all provincial planning uh, initiatives. We must have regard for matters of provincial interest. Uh, that's set out in the Planning Act. And the latest one through Bill 51, they added as a list of, you know, list of provincial interests in the Planning Act, they have added sustainability. So we have to incorporate the whole issue of sustainability into our official plan, which is not there in that extent. We have to be consistent with the policy all policy statements. As I said, the whole issue of sustainability must be incorporated into the plan. We have to address that we're transitioning from green fields to more intensification, infill and redevelopment. And there are several emerging issues, but it's still going to be a scope plan. We're not going into looking at all, every piece of property, every land use designation. That is not happening through this process. It will continue to happen on a district-by-district district plan review basis. And finally, the good news is that the plan will, uh, and we, uh, will support and, uh, and offer to you that the plan will be written as user-friendly in more plain language um, uh, with a lot of photographs and graphics and, and linking the plan to, to the, the new zoning bylaw. And the plan will certainly, as the zoning will be, beyond the way. So, Madam Mayor, in summary, uh, we think that we're at a point in the evolution of uh, this Osaga plan that there is time and need for review, and we have set in front of you the work program that we have scheduled over the next two and a half years. Um, all of the funding for this year is in place uh, for, through the Planning Reserve Fund and the, the budget for this year. There will be a uh, budget implications uh, come forward for 2008 or 2009, you'll we'll certainly deal with that through the budget process. But uh, we're at a great time, as I said, we, we will have hopefully a, a new zoning bylaw and an official plan as a starting point that's in conforming with the zoning bylaw and, as I said, provide a great starting point for the review of, of the Mississauga plan. So that's my presentation, Madam Mayor, if there's any questions. Councillor Prentice. Thank you. Um, and good presentation, John. Thank you very much. Um, I just have one concern, and that is under the local area policy reviews, there are only um, four areas that you're looking at. And I mean, obviously, there are other areas that have been under severe intensification over the last few years. And I'm wondering why you've only chosen those four. Um, basically, district plans to look at. 
For you, Madam Mayor, uh, those four are the ones uh, for this year. We will be adding to that uh, component of additional uh, district planning reviews uh, subject to budget uh, implications for 2008 and 2009. That will be an ongoing process every year. Those are the ones that are currently ongoing, South Down, Port Credit, Lakeview, and we hope to start Cooksville, Councillor Anika, in September. So those are the ones, don't worry, those aren't the only ones that we, uh, we plan to do, but uh, as I said, subject to budget uh, requests and getting the resources, we will be doing several others. Now my staff really? may not like that to hear that, we'll be doing several others. And the policy division is here, and I, must, I know there's lots of planning staff here, but this is a major project for the policy division, and I'd just like to acknowledge that they're here today. So. So will, will you be doing all of the district plans then before the um, med review is completed? If I said yes, my staff would probably walk out. But uh, I will say we will do as many as we can. We hope to do three to four a year. Five, maybe. Uh, uh, we will do as many. We have 32 planning districts, so we won't be able to do all of them. Some of them don't need uh, the priority that uh, but we will be doing as many as we can in terms of priorities, certainly in the areas where it's been a while since a, a secondary or district plan has been, been undertaken. Okay, well, I guess as soon as you can let us know when you're, which other district plans you're going to look at, I certainly appreciate that. We will. Pat, we take requests, Councilor Curtis. Okay, well, I have two requests then, Rathwood and Applewood. Uh, that goes into the <laughs> Thank you. How's your moment? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor, and I apologize. I thought we were doing with R5, and it is confusing. It's very confusing for the public, all these plans. Um, but what I am concerned about is the uh, word endorsement. I'm pleased that you're going to be scoping, because it was a question I had asked when you brought up the whole issue of the uh, review of, uh, of the plan and the work program. So I'm glad you're, you're going to be score, scoping. But um, with, with the policies, we, Regarding the district plans, and I'm going through right now the south down one. I want to be sure that once we come up with the recommendations, that it, it will be done in a piecemeal way. Uh, because I think it's important that once that review and the recommendations come forward, they're not endorsed, they're part of the Mississauga plan. They are brought in, and as each district uh, has been done, that, that should be uh, completed and is in the plan so that you're not. You know, going over it in 2009, and that's part of the plan, and that's what we deal with when we're dealing with applications. So I want to make sure that that's going to be part of the plan. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That is definitely the, the process. As each district plan is finished and approved, that the um, we will amend the Mississauga plan and incorporate it. And not only that, with the Bill 51 now being in effect, we will implement it through the zoning as well. So it'll be a complete package. The amendments. We won't wait to the end of it. Each planning district, as it's done, will be incorporated into the plan. It'll be a, an evolving process. That's, that gives me a level of comfort, um, because we don't know what's going to happen with uh, possibly a new government. We could be dealing with a whole new set of, of uh, statements uh, from the uh, provincial government. So I think that it's important that we deal at the local level with our district, um, our district policies. The question was asked at budget time by a couple of us to the commissioner with regards to budget. We asked, is there enough uh, with regards to planning? And I think given that planning is extremely important, it's, it's probably the most important thing that we deal with in terms of uh, the, the local level and how we want to see the vision unfold. I think it's important that if, if budget is a concern, that that's something that we highlight as we move in uh, to next year's budget. Because there was a question we asked, and you gave us the um, the indication that, that the, budget, the budget wasn't in place and we had enough resources, etc. So I think the question that Councilor Prentice asked is an important one. That if the, the budget needs to be addressed, then let's address it. Uh, because this is extremely important that these things get in place as quickly as possible as we deal with so many of the intensification applications. I might just respond to that. That, that certainly is music to the ears of my staff because we had a budget meeting yesterday looking at opportunities and pressures for this year. And uh, I have a whole number of requests from my the director before me for a new position, but, but we certainly will be, be looking at some of those processes. Yes. Thank you. Councilor Corbison. 
Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, two things that I would like staff to uh, uh, consider when uh, looking at the work program, and I don't know that they necessarily have to be put into the work program. And John, I think you'll, you'll certainly be aware of both of them. As you know, I've been having um, a number of meetings with the Port Credit Village Rate Peer Association with respect to uh, their concern over what is commonly known now as monster homes. Uh, we have been working with them to come up with some different zoning standards. Um, I will be calling the ward meetings. I will be doing all that part. But eventually, uh, we are going to have to dedicate some staff resources. I don't see any consultants or anything. It's going to be much more minor than many on that ward more in part. But I would just, uh, and I have spoken to the commissioner about it. And uh, the commissioner, I, I believe, is on side with that. Yeah, I, I just make a comment. I mean, I think, you know, we have the official plan review, and we'll look at what needs to be put into the official plan to address the concerns that have been raised by the rapiers and yourself. But you know, we also have our ongoing work within the department outside of this specific work that's going with the official plan review. I mean, it, it, it's a concern. It's a concern that uh, you know, we will certainly look at the most appropriate. Needs to be addressed, and it may be that we can piggyback it on on the Port Credit District Plan Review. Um, but we, we would like that looked at um, definitely sometime this year. Um, the other thing that's been raised, and uh, again, I think, John, you're, you're aware of it. I know Ron Miller is. Um, there's uh, a number of people that have asked the city to consider the placemaking exercise in conjunction with the review of the Port Credit District Plan. Economically, it makes sense to me to do it now while we're doing the, the plan for both public and private spaces rather than to wait five years and go through all that consultation again. Uh, as you know, there is some, a resident in Lakeview who uh, uh, teaches planning at the University of Toronto that has offered his services with respect to, to the placemaking exercise um, at, at no charge. In other words, I will, I will help in whatever way I can. So I would like staff to, I'm still waiting for a response from staff and I know you've been busy with more pressing items, but uh, I would like that uh, just to be part of the record as well. Through you, Madam Mayor, just I can give you a response right now, Councillor Ferguson. Um, we have been in touch with uh, Mr. Del Delaney, I believe, did that any. Um, our terms of reverence for retaining uh, a consultant to look at the Lakeshore Road corridor, we amended yesterday to include uh, placemaking as part of the exercise. And, th and that's, that's music to my ears. As I say, it just makes economic sense to me to do it while we're doing the Park Credit District Plan Review, especially given all the development that we know is coming into the Park Credit area. The Mayor and I have had a number of meetings up late with respect to it. Uh, could I ask you, John, to send me uh, an email just to confirm that so I can let uh, the interested parties know? We'll do that today. Thank you very much. But, uh, just to add to what you said, Councilman, where does the Lakeview plan sit? Lakeview plan um, is yeah, going from to, a priority point. It, it is being done this year, both yeah. Port Credit and Lakeview. Well, it'll be done. Then it'll be done together, together right? sort of. Yes. Because there is a tie in this. Yes, yes. Very definitely. Yes, because it's all of the Lakeshore Corridor. Yeah, that's what I, we're trying yeah. to bring together. I think it's very It's going to be a very exciting exercise, I think, for, yeah. for both areas. For both areas. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Thompson. Thanks very much, Mr. Mayor. This certainly shows the and I'm just wondering, with such a crack team and uh, the comprehensive zoning, I thought it would make a bit of planning sense to keep them uh, working during this process rather than just banning them, <laughs> allowing them to go back to their other jobs. I don't think they've never been even planning. Uh, uh, I'll to roast me that suggestion the last time. <laughs> uh, I think we're taking that as a rhetorical question. Oh, but uh, by the same token, I think that they need a sabbatical, but it's okay. Yes, you can see it ever is. Thanks for your Councillor Dale. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I think uh, Councillor Cross referred to internal planning here, a new division. But uh, no, the, uh, our, our official plan is, is truly the, the blueprint for the future. And it doesn't seem that long ago that we went through the whole process of putting it all together and incorporating the, the district plans within that plan itself that, that makes it work. Um, the question for you, Madam Mayor, to, to John is, uh, has any consideration been given looking at some of the district plans and how some of the neighborhoods have changed over time? Uh, possibly changing <coughs> the actual uh, names, uh, in partic particularly uh, with respect to some of those plans, as well as 
just redefining some of them. Uh, like I use it as an example of the Inner Ontario District Plan. Yeah. And no offense to my colleague to the left, but it's a huge plan and it incorporates a, a, most of a, a good section of the south part of Ward 5 as well as part of Ward 4. But the neighborhoods are very distinct in their own way. And I'm just looking at uh, through you, Madam Mayor, to see if uh, we could look at changing some of those those plans. And another example is Rapid, where uh, just a small piece of it is in Ward 4. Four, as well as the credit, which is a small piece of it, is and whether we should reconfigure that and maybe rename it or consider it a different plan or part of an existing plan within closer to a neighborhood within the ward itself. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, um, yes, Councillor Dale, this is the time to do it. If we want to change the structure format of the planning districts, uh, amalgamate them. Uh, reduce them, change them, this is the time that we would do it as part of the urban structure. Um, in fact, my staff has raised that. Uh, I initially said, uh, well, I don't think so, but now that uh, it's been brought up here, I think that it's a great idea. Uh, and uh, I, we, we can look at it. In fact, we were honestly, Councillor Dale, looking at re reducing it and getting into more neighborhood planning and tertiary planning instead of at the planning district level, we would, we would like to have uh, more uh, detailed plans, sort of sub-districts. So uh, if that's the wish of council, we certainly we, we can look at that as part of this review. As I said, the timing is perfect. Well, you no, know, and I'm pleased to hear that. I, I would just ask, Madam Mayor, that uh, the staff meet with the, the councillors of each ward and, and discuss this matter with them because okay. they're more familiar with the neighborhoods as well. So okay. thank you for that. We'll be there. Uh, since you've raised the question of Councillor Dale, I, I think what Councillor Corbison has just indicated, uh, I think we should be looking at a Lakeshore Corridor and a Huron Ontario Street Corridor as well, so I would hope that the staff would take that into consideration. Um, I think, uh, you know, when I look back over the years of our official plan, we had in mind, it hasn't quite happened, in fact, there's some development that shouldn't have happened. We looked at Huron Ontario Street as our University Avenue. So if you're going to have the University Avenue, then you have to have all the pieces put together. That's what I like about Councillor Corbin saying Lakeview and Port Credit working together, I think it's, it's so important. They tie in, so I would hope that we would look at the Huron Ontario uh, plan as a plan for Huron Ontario right from the lake up, quite honestly, because we're going to be looking at light rail transit on, on uh, uh, here on Ontario Street. That's going to be our main corridors at this point, unless something changes. So um, I, I'm glad you raised the question, but I think maybe we should go a little deeper into that as to uh, a plan for a corridor. Um, in response to your question, Madam Mayor, uh, first of all, the growth plan requires us to look look at uh, corridors. Yeah. Sec and you'll see on the screen in front of you, on the, under the local area policies review, the last uh, major study is nodes and corridors. We are doing a separate study on nodes and corridors as part of this review. Lakeshore Road, from Lake, including Lakeview through the and including Port Credit, is one of those corridors that yeah. we're looking at. Yeah. We're combining the two the two district plan reviews are going on simultaneously, but we're doing that corridor. We will be looking at Dundas Street as a major corridor, certainly here in Ontario as part of the LRT study. Uh, so uh, not only does the growth, as I said, the growth plan requires to do it, we, we know we have to look at these areas. One thing I, I'd like to uh, emphasize, sorry, Councilor Allen, just to add, and I hope transportation planning will play a major role in our official plan review, which it hasn't to date. The, the, you know, the LRT on, on Huron, Ontario Street, what are we going to do on Dundas? What are we going to do on Lakeshore? Because Lakeshore is a corridor that is very, very congested and a lot, yeah. So, you know, transportation planning, I hope, is the, one of the key bases, key situations that will be looked at. Madam Mayor, I'd just like to comment that uh, Martin whispered in my ear that, that through the, the funding we have for the province uh, for the uh, environmental assessment work uh, along here in Ontario, 
we are in fact uh, looking at very much an integrated uh, study that looks at, uh, at the land use and transportation their relationship together. So that, that is a priority and certainly we would, we would be doing similar kinds of things along the other corridors. Excellent. Councillor Adams. Thank you. When it comes to the employment land study, um, how are we going to look at what types of uses we'll permit next to one another? One of the things that we've been constantly dealing with is whether or not we should permit freestanding restaurants in employment land use areas or, um, or strip clubs or massage parlors and, and that type of thing. Is that going to be included in this plan? Um, true, Madam Mayor. Yes, the, the growth plan and Bill 51 both uh, require municipalities to take a, a second look at their employment land policies. The, the main emphasis is to make sure that the redesignation of employment lands to other uses, primarily residential, doesn't happen sort of in a vacuum. There has to be a comprehensive study to look at employment lands. And we're doing that. That's in this year's work program. And what that will include is how much employment land do we need the type of employment, the uses within those employment lands, your question, uh, whether they're part of a node or, or a court or a major employment area, and, and that is to provide the planning policy context for reviewing development applications for conversion. The growth plan and Bill 51 make it very clear that conversions of employment lands to other uses has to be part of a major comprehensive municipal review. It cannot happen as one-offs. It has to look at the whole municipality. Do you have enough employment land for the long term? But to answer your question specifically, yes, the uses within those areas will, will be looked at. So compatibility of uses. But it, the employment land study is really look, looking at a much larger uh, policy framework for it, it, uh, retaining employment lands so that municipalities uh, don't just literally give them away, they have to be part of a major study before a conversion application can be, can be considered. No, and it's, I think, I think it's so important. I mean, we're at this attractor to some wonderful jobs right now in Mississauga, and you want to make sure that 10, 20 years down the road, you're still attracting those great, great paying jobs. So thank you. I wish that. Uh the growth plan had been legislated before we went to the OMB on the count of the Brooklands and streets, so we might have saved ourselves a million and a half dollars, which it cost us to fight that from being converted from industrial to commercial, uh, to uh, residential. We won. It was a, the total cost of that OMB hearing was estimated to be four million dollars by the time the applicants, uh, law laws were involved, CPR was involved. We had all, everybody involved on our side, fortunately, but it cost about $4 million. If this had been legislated, the, uh, what the province has come up with, and that is they don't want uh, industrial commercial land converted to, uh, to residential. Residential gets built first. Residential gets priority and has over the years, and uh, we're uh, behind. Fortunately, in the society, we had some I believe it's 3,800, 4,000 acres still left. It's more than 3,000 for sure. Yeah, which is great, I agree. So it's very difficult today to convert uh, uh, industri uh, industrial lands to residential. The province has decided that because it was running rampant throughout the province. And it was rampant in Mississauga as well because citizens want more residential, they don't want commercial and industrial. So, uh, I have, I'd like a motion. Uh, you're moving it. Madam Second. Mayor, I'd like, this is a public, this is a public meeting under the planning oh, act, yeah, so right. you, sorry. Uh, so I ask whether anyone in the audience. Yeah, is there anybody in the audience that would like to address council on the recommendation that staff has made to us that we undertake an official plan review legislated, by the way, by the province, that it has to be done by 9, uh, 2009 uh, in order to incorporate uh, the growth plan which the province has legislated. The, what the province has done, folks, and you can say this to your citizens, the province now has an official plan 
and they insisted that the municipalities have, but they never had one. It was all guidelines and, and, and etc. You know, now we have an official plan of the province one, and the growth plan is the official plan. So now they've only adopted what they're now not only preaching to us that we must have one, that they've adopted one themselves. And I think it's going to be great, in my opinion, for the province of Ontario. We're going to have some provincial uh, influence on how uh, the communities develop. You've heard of the motion. It's moved by uh, Sue McFadden and seconded by George Cross on the written resolution. All in favor? Any opposed? Carry. Okay, on your way, John, with your crew. <laughs> <laughs>